Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Mr. Dogboat333, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, the New Order, last days of Europe as the state of Guangdong. Now, last video, um, we began the process of selling Yasuda. And uh, it's going okay-ish, I think. Um, right now we're working towards playing favorites, but before we do that, we still got a little bit of lore to look over, because we, uh, last couple videos didn't get a chance to, now. Um, I'm streaming this again, I didn't stream the last couple parts, I don't think I have anyone in chat right now, but if they got confused, uh, of a jump in, uh, time, that's what happened. So let's check out Choshu. Chanteau was a fishing village during the Song Dynasty, then a coastal alternative bastion, then one of the first and f most significant treaty ports, opened up by the Treaty of Tianjin in 1858, bearing the blessing and curse of foreign commerce and capital when its neighbor Chaozhou refused to. A reason for its growth to the third busiest port in China by the mid-1930s, as well as a major distribution hub for the Southeast, was its relative peace, as it stood as a Brunt of Japanese artillery fire in 1939 became anything but. The Santo of today remains, it retains its function as a major transportation nexus, only this time under watch for eyes and suffocating grips. It spoils reserved for the co prosperity sphere and the spear alone. Hmm. Unfortunate. Does Santo have a little. It does not, just. Uh, just fields. Well, got to get the old timer running. Let's do this. So, let's go ahead and start playing favorites. <clears throat> most of the assets of Yusuda will most likely be bought up by companies here in Guangdong. As many of the companies will have members on the legislative council, we have an opportunity to get them on our side. Because we play favorites with companies of the council, selling them the assets, in return for a few favors from the council members. Let me, um, let's go ahead and check out the distribution right now. Right now, Matsushita's at the bottom. Fujitsu is in the lead, actually. Sony's about where they were before. But there's still some time yet for them to gain some power. <sighs> Give me a break. MLG sat surrounded by the sheets upon sheets of documents and fiscal reports. Well, hi. Excuse me, sirs. <clears throat> Bearing an exasperated expression on his face, he placed a hand on his forehead and let out a sigh of fatigue as he once again reviewed the compiled data gathered on his desk. He could not believe it. The endeavor had crumbled like a fragile house of cards, knocked over by the erratic tides of the market. The entry into the and show it an undeveloped market of instant rice had been a costly misstep. The Nintendo Corporation now hemorrhaging funds, as made evident to him by the seamlessly countless red arrows and negative figures littered across the charts. Instead of being a beneficiary of an exploited realm of consumer demand, triumphant, triumphant where established competitors had failed, he had joined them in ignominious defeat. Yamauchi sifted through piles of records with irritation, desperate to discover where the critical mistake had been made. Stopped abruptly, and the string of failures and issues raveled, unraveled themselves like a carpet of thorns in his mind. He admitted a crucial fact to his original concept. The fact that rice was a cheap and plentiful commodity requiring minimal processing, unlike noodles, making it abundant on short stills. Additionally, the cooking of rice took significantly less effort and time compared to noodles, discouraging most consumers from bothering to purchase alternative variants, something he had failed to see. Emuchi slouched back into his seat with dismay. Thoughts of the future and past clouding his perturbed head. As he continued to reflect upon his defeat, the mire of discouragement within his head began to dissipate. This would not be the end, for Nintendo's potential is vast and boundless. But for now, we're back to the drawing board. Got extra influence growing, we'll see where it ends up. Oh, no. Um...
got in war. We're done playing favorites, at least for now. So, let's go ahead and do... Matsushita's offer. The Matsushita Electric Company has approached us with an intriguing offer. If we were to sell the assets off of Yasuda Matsushita Electric, the company would also take on Yasuda's liabilities as well. Their price is our full support within the Legislative Council when they need it. This deal will not only bring in money for our government, it will also rid us of any debts or interest we inherited from Yasuda. Not bad. Matsuzawa can't remember anything in his career as big as Yasuda's insolvency or its coming sell-off. He doubts any of his contemporaries can either. It's worth remembering that Guangdong is its own entity, separate from Japan, he thinks. Over here, it is the companies that rule, and it's the companies that, who will decide. Apart from their skyscraper headquarters, it is they who look upon Yasuda with hunger in their eyes. When they pick the flesh off its bones, it will be of no use to anyone. He has to be a distant observer, someone will be silently told, your time is over, and replaced by a more memorable face. He stops himself for a moment. There is perhaps a cold comfort of being a distant observer even now. There are little consequences for what he does. And perhaps if he sends a few messages, calls the headquarters of the company. Takuji shuffles through the papers. He's leafing through. All the assets that are to be sold are listed in these pages. One call, and it would be the in contract with a leader, telling them the best cuts of meat where their money would be best spent, an advantage in a world of cutthroats. A lone thought stands among the flood of possibilities. What about the collar? Kuji is uncertain. The collar is not, and never was, forthright about his views on the matter beyond exactly what he told them. Would he appreciate such a thing? Or would we displease and punish him for crossing the line Kuji never knew was there? His freedom is his own, and he's free to tilt the scales. Ulsland is in chaos. What else is new? Hmm? I don't know why Japan just owns these two little bits. Expansion to Africa. Silhouette detection. Um, I don't know what else to research, honestly. Warsaw Uprising. Indonesia is having some conflicts. England is in conflict. What else is new? Going twice. All bids have been set over Yasuda's assets. Many, especially from the remains of Yasuda, are decrying this as opportunism. While they cannot deny such accusations, the fact remains that this is the best way to make use of resources now that the company has collapsed. Matsuzawa had set all the accountants from working on the suit of elevation home early. A break from their hard work, he said. As for himself, he stayed behind in the office to check through the numbers. Again, and to let Matsushita into the chief executive's office after hours. I'm grateful you made the time to see me. I was starting to think you weren't interesting. Get to the chase. What's your offer? The upcoming auction is selling Yasuda's assets, not its debts. If you sell to me, I can take on some of those debts and dump them in Japan, off to the government's balance sheet. The more I get, the more debt you can offload, and we'll pay a full price. That's remarkably generous. And the catch is, I know you still command some sizable support in the Legislative Council. If I... if... I do you... And Guangdong a favor. I'm sure you'll listen to me when the time comes. It's only fair. Matsushita plays the long game. Interesting. Hidden heroes. Formation of a shield. Um, I'm impressed the U.S. forces is doing as well as it is. Honestly. I did not expect that. Because usually, in my experience, if these two don't ally, they get crushed. But, no. There goes Ukrainian conflicts. Domino stop. The years of pop-ups are just about done. 
and sold. Yasuda's gone. It's been swept in the dustbin of corporate history, remembered only as the instigator of corruption and crumbling of economics economies across Asia. The effect of Yasuda's collapse is still being felt, but the company itself is no more or. Guangdong waits for no man nor corporation, at least of all a dead one. This is but a new beginning for our state. So Yasuda still has 26 seats, but how long that is, who knows. And then... Oh, I just noticed these, uh... Do some subscriptions here, so I guess you gotta read these real quick. So we have Suzuki loyalists still in. How quick to turn are those kept loyal by promises of wealth and power when both are found to be wanting? Such is the way of things in Guangdong, and of Chief Executive Suzuki's men in particular. Having crowded them around him in time of plenty, they disavow him in the wake of his suit's collapse in hopes of saving their own skin. But spare a thought for those few who continue to make cause with each stricken chief executive. Whether of long-buried principles, petty rivalries, sunk costs, or self-delusions, these men have tied themselves to the mass of Zuki's sinking ship, come what may. Then Yasuda. Pride comes before fall in the wake of a storm. Left behind the, by the Minazaka scandal, Yasuda lies broken, with balance sheet tatters and its senior leadership implicated in the worst corruption scandal in Japanese history. Nobody in Tokyo is lifting a finger to save Yasuda, overturning its position in Guangdong almost overnight. Even as more self-interested men manship, Matsuzawa Takuchi, now chief executive, leads a battered remnant of Yasuda officers to see Guangdong through its greatest crisis. Their loyalty will know no, no longer buy them riches or renown, only the knowledge that they serve their master until the bitter end. So, this is a distribution. It's 13, 30, 19, 26, 12. We'll see how the distribution turns out at the end of this. And the Yanks are going to win. Yep, the communists are holding out in this province I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Now we can get working on this one. Uh, limiting collateral damage. It seems the pseudo collapse single handedly brought our domestic tensions to a boiling point. Across the East China Sea, thousands of displaced home island aristocrats, businessmen, and residents alike flock to us every day for a semblance of normal life. A certain burden on our infrastructure, meanwhile, on our own streets, our attempts at economic first aid have been inevitably provoked backlash in the form of worsening distant activities, paralyzing government institutions, and bringing financial recovery to a standstill. The longer we let this stand, the least likely we'll survive the eventual fallout. It is imperative that we initially begin formulating our approach to the issues at hand, so as to deliver our people both within and outside our borders a satisfactory solution, whatever the cost may be. The auction of Yasuda assets has been handled with all the delicacy of a butcher carving up a hog's carcass. With a prized building or business unit, priced and doled out to the bidding buyers without affection or sentiment. Fong Gavel heralded another part of Yasuda's corpse sold for parts, striking home with a resounding thud of a cleaver, sundering bone. As the final bang rang out, out in the hushed auction floor, the assembled press tallied the winning bids, seeing which of tycoons would walk away from the line chair. They turned to see Matsushita Masaharu, smiling coyly in his seat, with Marina Nabuka decamping towards the exits in defeat. Matsuzawa watched the scene unfold emotionlessly, watching reporters crowd on Matsushita for comment before he walked off stage without a word. The transfer of ownership conferred power as well as assets, and it stood to reason that the press had no further interest in Matsuzawa, just as they had no further interest in Yasuda. Matsushita has won the auction for the remaining Yasuda assets. They shall receive the reserve 9% of the share. So we'll increase our local reserves by 0 0.8. That's not bad. It's actually pretty good. And the seat distribution seems to be the same, actually. Which is interesting. And let's see. It is... Oh boy. 
16, 17 hours and a questioning, muttered Sergeant Kowalski Minori, scribbling his notebook. Officer Shida will escort you out of the building once you leave the room. Thank you for your time, Mr. Nakamura. Uh, pleasure, sir. I'm just doing my part for the community. With that, the witness left. Lieutenant Ito entered the room less than two minutes after his Kawasaki had his head buried in reports and note-taking. Well, anything worthwhile? Possible ID on a truck that fled the scene last night, likely carrying less of cargo and damage pretty bad. Model, color, plates. But, I'm not going to like this, am I? Asked the lieutenant. Only got the plates from one witness. Everything else I was too dark to see. A guy named Nakamura Yasuke. Rap sheet the length of your arm. All drug crimes, too. A guy like that. Normally, he'd be hiding from us after all that if he was innocent. He's coming to us with a golden ticket out of blue. Something's not right here. I think we're being used. If it leads us to the perp, it leads us to the perp, surely. Even they are playing us. It's the best lead we had. And we need to track the shipments yesterday. Something's bigger is at play here, and that witness knows something. We'll play a little risky. Right now, it seems that, uh... We're gonna earn, uh, Matsushita's gonna earn the bulk of the seats, if I had to guess, at this point. Um... Chinese support here is actually pretty good. I think I'll go ahead raid their storage. And then I don't want to build police boxes. Actually. You see it has a lot of control over here. Let's see what I can do over here. Go ahead and raid. We'll raid some Yakuza bases over here. Gives us a little uh, police support by proxy. And there goes the Philippines. Should I say the OFN Philippines now? What are they doing? Um, hmm. Wanted to check down here real quick, because it's been a while. Our corruption is insane. I'm not surprised there at all. I think we'll save up to uh, investigate some finances. Yeah. Ooh. Alright, so this is going to increase our police support the most in these areas. Um, as opposed to Kenpai Tai. I think that's what I'd prefer, without a doubt. So, the hits to Zujin and Chinese opinions are going to be rough. But I think we'll stick to uh, this side of things. Because I think we'll, we'll have plenty of time to build this back up before the point that we need to. I hope, at least. The street and the government hall are two sides of the same coin, they say. All it takes is a hellfire of economic turmoil to devour it all. All the intensification of police deployments, all the authorization of Kent by Thai operations, it isn't just enough. With every passing day, for every hundred people thrown out of their jobs or apartments, hundred more swayed over to the subversive elements, slipping throughout our fingers and running rampant across the map. The side of demonstrators and protesters at the doorstep of, doorsteps of government buildings has degraded into an irritating regularity and nuisance, distracting loyal officers from performing their actual duties for the sake of our recovery. What we've been doing isn't enough, it, but it's still not too late to catch up. Begin, we have to begin drafting up plans of action and take matters firmly into our own hands. Before the Genpai Tai can take them into their own. Otherwise, the credibility of our own government will suffer. 
There we go. Ooh. Exciting news from the executives and engineers of Guangdong today is great announcements in audio and visual technology have been announced. This year's round of product launches includes a full suite of new televisions, radios, cameras, and recording equipment that made available to the consumer market. Now more than ever before, consumers will be able to record the memories and moments most precious to them. The cinema and music industries will be able to reach heights never thought possible. The miracle of innovation on the Pearl River continues. Does anyone know where the play button on this thing is? Sony product profitability increases by 2.5%. Very nice. They're already starting to beat um those guys over there. Ooh. Chief Executive Matsuzawa emptied the empty chair in his office impatiently, a finger tapping the desk restlessly. The others, Marita, Matsushita, Buka, and Colonel Miyazaki, alternated between reading, rereading their briefings, sighing in frustration, or glowering at the door. Since Commissioner Takigawa will not be joining us, Matsuzawa said irritably, slapping his portfolio, portfolio folder with command thump. Who else has a plan to get this rabble to dissipate first? <clears throat> Besides the recent protest, must still account for hardline distant activity. Mizaki straightened his perfectly pressed khaki uniform, addressing the gathered, gathering as a whole. We have the resources to secure the street to round up the distant leaders, but not both. Hold on, Morita interrupted, wisp of white hair, framing his face as much as she nodded approvingly. Can't be deciding this without police input. The Kenpai Dai don't have sole authority. The commissioner can't be bothered to come to a meeting. They have nothing to contribute, and they know it. Abuka scoffed. Colonel Miyazaki's men are more than capable, and more importantly, they are present right now. My men are always at your disposal, Miyazaki stated firmly, his muscle physique faintly visible through his uniform's fabric, regarding each of the executives with a flinty glare. We have the experience to control crowds and make miscreants talk. Our methods work, and we work best without interference. We'll call the police again. And from there, we're going to go ahead and round up the agitators. This actually should get us back into control in Hong Kong. Or, uh, is it Macau I think we fell out of control in? It was Macau, right. This should put us over the edge in Macau. Help boost our, uh, influence in these border areas. So let's go ahead and round up the agitators. A matter, as a matter of fact, we not we do have a rough list on our hands. The most prominent faces of dissenters, from radicals advocating workplace reforms, Chinese nationalists, rabble rousers, to Nanking sep sympathizers demanding retrocession of Guangdong to the legitimate government. We cho simply chose to bl turn a blind eye to those people who amounted to little significance in the past. But extreme times call for extreme measures. Every one of them will be tracked down and put under custody to prevent them from fanning the flames, already burning away what little left of our dom domestic stability. We're well aware this won't be a silver bullet to the unrest. All we need is to get the message out, warn the anti populace against stepping out of line, and buy ourselves enough time to decide on the next course of action. Let's round out the agitators then. Seeing the, uh, seeing the pie charts is interesting, personally speaking. Republic of Madagascar is the uh, Japanese allied one, right? Madagascar, go oh, Jesus, I did not... See this before. Yeah, at this point, it's the Japanese versus the Americans on the island. And, um, let's crack down on organized crime. 
We've let the underworld run amok for too long. The triads of Yakuza, those who cheer at our woes and take their spoils from the rubble with glee. Reports from past weeks have indicated a drastic uptick in recruitment operations, smuggling ring activities, as well as extortion and kidnapping of innocent civilians. Worse still, rumor has it that a growing number of officers within their own ranks have already been compromised, apparently desperate for any source of cash to make ends meet. Our tolerance ends here. We'll put our foot down and make our stance clear, even if it's for a lost cause. We'll employ whatever we have at hand to muster up at least some semblance of resistance against such blatant violations of social order, and make clear that Guangdong's essence lies in its integrity, not its shady dealings. So we'll do so. Corruption, decrease Yakuza and Triad control in all states by a nice amount. <clears throat> Look, okay, his name, Tim Seung Yang, position vice chairman of the Guangdong Republic of China Restoration Committee. <laughs> Look, neither is getting anywhere, anything out of this at this rate. So if you just cooperate, <laughs> so you can get back to sucking off your Japanese gold masters again. Great aspirations for a cha shameless fucking race trader. What even is China to you anymore, I wonder? Oh, I'll tell you what it is. It's dead. Dead for heaven knows no how many years anymore, and what's left right beyond our borders is nothing but a bloated corpse that can't even stand on its feet and feed up its own, feed its own people. I'm telling you right here and now, Mr. Tin, that we couldn't care less but your Kuomintang warship. All your daydreams about selling out Guangdong to the bastard of a nation up north. Don't you fucking... But you know what we do care about. Actual living people here who are... Fed up with all the shit your renegades stir up every five minutes. People who aren't simply who simply aren't so pointlessly obsessed with lost causes such as you are, just want to survive this goddamn crisis. People like those seven innocent children, until you decide to throw those explosives onto the tramway. How many times do we have to tell you none of us were in fucking Hong Kong back then? How about we get out your? How about you get your fucking facts right before you go? Just go off swinging your donkey dick around. <sighs> Perhaps there's nothing more I can do then. You ever talk to us, or our, our friends in Ken Pai Tai talk to you? Your choice. End of excerpt. Next, Ooh, we're going to get more data storage bonuses. It's going to give us more political power. Very nice. Be able to decrease our corruption soon. To increase the Zujin support. Hmm. Crane is not having a good time right now. Um. Let's look at the tsunami. Hundreds, maybe more, of deaths of Japanese wash up on our shores. Their misery only threatens to compound our own. In the wake of Yasuda's collapse, hundreds of thousands of workers in Japan have been thrown into economic desperation. This, unsurprisingly, has launched a new migration of businessmen and their families into Guangdong. Many are fleeing the consequences of a collapse, whether that is debt payments, jilted lovers, political enemies, or simply the shame that they have lost everything. While we are taking in as many as we can, we are still in recovery from the economic crisis is putting a more str it's putting a strain on our coffers to take care of them as more settle we have no choice but take action upon these settlers absolutely preposterous a well-dressed stanley ho leaned back into his chair tensely contradicting his usual suave and easygoing demeanor chief executive matsuzawa and commissioner or Suchida Kuniyasu sat opposite of him, their faces stern and rigid, unwilling to allow for the man, the man who they perceived as smooth charlatan to slip by the consequence of his practices. A sumptuous tea re set, rested neatly upon on the mahogany gas desk of chief executive, drops out of hot drops of hot chamomile tea, stripping slowly on a tray from the spout of a teapot. Stanley O picked up the porcelain teacup placed before him, hot steam emitting from liquid, and continued.
You do know that the activities of police around Guangdong are suppressing the craft of hard-working, honorable businessmen, correct? Especially as the livelihoods of people deteriorate. Self-righteous and bellicose response temporarily silenced the room. If only the dripping tea remaining audible, the unnerving tension was shattered by the voice of Matsu Matsuzawa. If you would describe underground smuggling and illicit business as honorable, certainly you would be correct. Matsuzawa replied, obviously unsatisfied with Ho's conduct, fidgeting with the handle of an empty teacup. The voice of Commissioner Tsushida followed his strident tone, making Ho mildly uncomfortable. Guangdong, as of current, is between a rock and a hard place. Having as our society is being dragged through the gutter, I will not allow the force of anarchy or chaos to prevail. The law exists for a reason. The police come to work every day for the reason. There is no excuse. After a continued brief conversation, Stanley Ho quickly stood up and exited the room without an extra word. The law may be harsh, but it is the law. Certain actions are inexcusable. Let's check out. There we go. I have control back in Macau again. Same in Hong Kong. That's probably not slipping anytime soon. Koshu, we should be good for a while. Well, my, we're actually pretty close to flipping the police. Shokan, not very close. Choshu, we might get to eventually. Um, police, eventually, we're probably going to want to save up for local power for the new uh, product cycle, I'm thinking. Croatian winter. Who are these guys? Looks like a bunch of new shit. Here's um Gorbachev, I guess. Hmm, interesting. I'll probably have to look at this a little bit offline. Or uh when this video is done. <clears throat> the orders were to confiscate any cash he happened upon. For the good of a state, the boys back at the station recited with knowing smirks. Lam Hiao Chung, of course, had heartlessly joined the smirking party too. For the good of a state, more like for the good of their master's pockets, the smirk never returned to him at the checkpoint. Why, why would it? He knew the very instant he laid his hands upon the 1,000 yen stack, he was committing a sin that no amount of for the good of a state could ever excuse. Yet even... This moment of lucidity had failed to restrain him from the stuffing cash, stuffing the cash into his pockets. Without so much as a hint of remorse, right before the mortified faces of the middle-aged Japanese nobleman and his daughter, and then proceeding to respectfully tell them to just fuck off to someone somewhere else, right after taking a whole two nights worth of hotel rent from them too. Uh, hopefully, their buddy Suzuki Taichi could help him with that. Lamb's gaze lingered after the duke. After the duos, they hurried away to the edge of the cordons, and that was when the nausea finally caught up to him. He excused himself from the checkpoint, darted behind the barren hilltop 50 meters away, and immediately the torrent of bile of guilt of absolute self-loathing gushed out of his mouth at once. So this is what the oh so honorable officer had stooped to. Outright fucking robbery. Roared one voice in his head. Serve a Japanese bandits well, sneered another. On and on, the dual voices collided and reverberated within Lom's skull, as heaven and earth swirled before his eyes into a carousel of gray. Which voice should he listen to? He, he didn't know. He didn't want to know. Who was he anyway? A fucking nobody? Having his soul sold to this silicon purgatory long ago, to judge what's right and what's wrong anymore. As the convolutions in his stomach finally came to a halt, Lom steadied his breath, and exhaustedly turned his head back to the shuffling rags and makeshift tents lining the Koshu seaside before him. Another 20 refugees had been processed in his absence, it seemed. Or 30. He was too tired to keep count anyway. And I'm too tired to keep uh, this uh, video going, so I'm going to have to end it here. Thank you as always for watching, my friends. If you like this video, leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you want to see more of this content, feature the sub button for uploads weekdays, as well as occasionally Saturdays. Having comments, feedback, concerns, leave in the comment section below. I read all the comments I get and appreciate any all feedback you may have for me. If you want to chat or play games or anything sort, check out my Discord. If you want to see me do the sort of live, check out my Twitch. If you want to see me bucks my check out my Patreon. If you want to uh, just see some non-gaming content from me, 
I have a Discord, or a second channel, rather. Uh, all those links down in the description box below. Thank you as always for watching, my friends. My name has been Mr. Dogboat 33 Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye now.